Good morning, everybody. I'm never 100% positive when this thing starts anymore, and so we're going to go under the assumption that you can see me and that we're making sense, and uh, um, let's go. All right, so uh, hi, everybody. We're going to take just a moment to let everybody crawl in here and join us. I'm going to go copy our stream onto the website. Website is jollyrogerukulele.com. And we are starting the foundations class from level one, book one, page one. Um, and so we'll be going through quite a bit of stuff today. Um, and let me get the link posted at correctly here on the website. People are probably like, where is he? Um, I'm running a tiny bit behind because I'm messing around with some software that is new. That should give me more control over lots of stuff on the website or on YouTube, and which uh, theoretically <laughs> then become a better presentation for you. So, all right, so now there's the link. Let's make sure it works the way I think it's going to work. Uh, leave the page, and then while we're waiting on that, let's go ahead and tweet today's class uh, Foundation Lessons 1 through 8, YouTube. Uh, on the website is HTTP. S colon slash slash jolly roger ukulele dot com and then I add in ah, let's just go with her that's fine uh, tweet okay and all right so we've tweeted and then I can close Twitter out and I can close this box out Valerie has made it in uh, ukulele time sounding Valerie I turned up what I think I turn what I think I did is I think I turned up the sound to the system so you let me know if the sound is hanging in there um, I I added 1.6 decibels <laughs> I don't know what that means but um, I did boost it up a tiny bit so um, we should be able to see um, should be able to sound a little bit louder and then um, um, I used to be able to see how many people were here um, but I don't know that how to do that anymore so looks like we got eight people listening in uh, up to 37 car <laughs> wind made it in 37 degrees in cars we had a cold weekend didn't we guys that was a record low in in Texas and uh, uh, super cold here in Denver and uh, so it seems like uh, up north up in, uh, in in Canada things were a little bit uh, less crazy uh, whereas down south here was super cold so let's see what comes up here uh, all right good all right so we have the things moving forward guys if you um, can um, let me know you're here just in the chat box if you happen to be logged in um, it's helpful for me just to have a general sense of quite that that some of you are logged in and over here um, you will have your chat box there if you're not logged into Gmail or YouTube you can't use the chat which is fine you don't have to um, but it's just helpful for me to know you're out there uh, and I am using some new software uh, to run YouTube and it's super it's I think it's way smarter than I am so I think I have the sound set properly I think I have the video set properly and so um, I think that we're gonna go with this and then um, you'll let me know you'll let me know how your experience is as a user of the of everything um, let's talk we have eight things we have to talk about today so um, from the website um, on the today's lesson um, we have a lot of just general things that we need to do um, this is the first lesson of the series and so one on the website um, you will see a, a piece of paper called um, the Colorado specific information the only thing you care about on there from a YouTube perspective is that my phone number which rings to this phone um, and my email address uh, is on there so if you have any questions or concerns uh, anything weird um, I would not call and leave a voicemail I'm 
I don't have time to do voicemail, but I do have time to answer texts. Or if I happen to pick up, I do pick up random numbers. Mostly it's spam calls, um, and it's kind of fun to talk to spam people uh, during the pandemic. But uh, uh, but if you so if you just call me up out of the blue, um, it'd probably be better if you text if you can. If you can't text, uh, sending me an email is probably the next best thing. So that's the only thing off of that piece of paper that you really need to know. The next piece of paper is called uh, Doing Ukulele Right, and it has a picture of Stuart, the minion, playing ukulele. Let's talk about what Stuart's really up to and what I need for you to do. By the way, if you have a baritone, you're going to be just fine. We cover all the same exact material for baritone that we cover for ukulele now. Um, I'm very excited about that. We have a really solid um, baritone program as well. The big thing with you holding the ukulele is I do need you to have um, a strap. You're going to need to have a strap because when with other styles of ukulele, you can hold on to the ukulele and strum and sing and you're fine. But with instrumental, you really can't. You're going to be using both these hands to do activities and there's no way to hold the ukulele and do everything that we need to do. So you're going to want to buy a strap with a little metal button that comes on it. You drill a little pilot hole in the bottom. It's okay. There's a block of wood on the bottom of your ukulele. You drill a little pilot hole in there, screw that little nut on there, uh, put the strap around your bod, and off you go. Now you can play. Um, so that's one thing I, that you're going to need to do to be probably successful. You know, I don't know if you have to do it, but it, it is probably important. There is one rule with ukulele. The pad of your thumb is going to be on the back of the neck. I am never going to see your thumb. This is never ever going to happen. Your thumb is going to be here um, and that that allows your hands to do this nice beautiful posture type thing and so uh, that's what I need for you to be able to do. Um, when you are playing um, your thumb will slide right around up and down the neck. Um, it'll be hanging out behind your middle finger. Your thumb will always be behind your middle finger. In the beginning that means that the muscle that we need to develop right here, not quite developed yet, it's going to take a little while to get that muscle up where you need it to be. Um, see I mentioned my phone and now here it is ringing. <laughs> Can't answer it during class. Um, and um, so this muscle here, we have to develop that. And so in the beginning, it's going to feel like you're squeezing like heck uh, to, to um, make your play the ukulele. You'll get used to that. Um, so that's the rule. Uh, making easier, I talked about adding a strap. Um, two things you don't need, um, guitar players, those of you with guitar background, you will not need your capo and you will not need a pick. Um, I do have, I pulled out of my mandolin over the weekend. I was playing with this pick and I am amazed <laughs> that this, you, you, with, with mandolin, you have to have one of these. I, I'm a, I don't want to see any purpose in that other than to make playing much more difficult. Um, and so so just know pick capos and picks, you're gonna, you do not need them. You can literally throw them away um, if, you, if ukulele is going to be your instrument uh, instrumental playing. Uh, on the other hand, um, if you are a singer and you're just here to learn some basic chords and start singing, one, you have way better teachers on the internet than me. I'm not, I, I, I will teach you how to do that, uh, but I'm not a singer and it's not really the focus. The focus here is to actually learn how to play this instrument. Um, next is, um, Linda says the volume is a little low and, Val and Valerie says it sounds a little bit better than the last class. I have more ability to turn that sound up, I think. So I'm gonna try um, in the next class to crank it up even higher and see what happens. Um, Rob says it's 19 degrees and snow down in there in Texas. Our heater went out this morning. Fireplace, space heaters, yeah. Uh, Texas has been just devastated with this cold snap. <laughs> and they, it is not, their 19 degrees isn't the temperature that you're supposed to be. Uh, Q, glad you're here. And Nancy, sound is good, sunny, 71 degrees. Perfect day in Florida. Okay, so Florida is going well. <laughs> All right. Also on that piece of paper about getting ukulele started right, um, we talk about size of ukulele. If you own a soprano, which is the little guy, you probably are, you prob and you're a grown up, um, you're probably on the wrong size ukulele. Probably. I do have sold a couple of sopranos to people with very tiny hands, but for the most part, most of you, if you have this size of hands, sort of normal adult size hands, and we use the word normal advisedly, um, you probably want to be on a 10 
tenor ukulele, which is this size. Um, if you are, a, uh, I, I do have a few men who have really big hands, and this is even too small. They will play baritone ukulele. Um, I have had one woman whose hands were so large that we ended up um, going with baritone, which is fine, right? It's just a different, uh, same thing. Everything's exactly the same. It just sounds deeper out of a baritone. Um, lots of you will get pretty good at playing ukulele, and then you'll be like, you know what? I want to try baritone too, and so by then you'll have the skills to do that. Concert ukuleles generally, I fit you in a concert if your fingers are a little bit shorter, um, and um, so um, concerts in that the intermediate phase. A lot of um, the people in our orchestra will play concert uh, because. They, they don't want to make that, it's, it, it, is, it is a further stretch, like this is a normal chord, and this stretch is a little easier to do on a concert than on a tenor, um, if you have a little bit shorter fingers. Um, there's also basses and banjo lalies and all that stuff, and over time we'll, we'll make fun of all that. Um, um, things you will want to own as a ukulele player, ukulele, button and a strap. Uh, you do need a carrying bag, so make sure you get one of those. You're going to need this tuner right here. It's called a Snark ST8. We'll talk about it in more detail in just a minute. Um, you're probably going to need a music stand and a light. Playing on your kitchen table is going to uh, make your neck hurt and so you probably really do want to get a music stand and probably a little light to go with it. Uh, three ring binder with section dividers. We're going to tell you how to set up your binder here in a little bit. Uh, highlighters and a pencil. Um, I have a pencil right here. It's never far away and I have a whole bucket full of highlighters um, um, uh, on my music bench here um, and, and I use them. And then finally, you will need a kazoo. <laughs> it is just what it is. If your ukulele has white strings or black strings, you can do better. Um, these days, um, all of us are playing with fluorocarbon, and of course, there's name brands and stuff. Don't pay any, too much attention to that. I've used all of the fluorocarbon brands. Uh, fluorocarbon's pretty much fluorocarbon. Um, it's the best string that's out right now, um, and it is, those of you who like to go tarpon fishing, it's tarpon fishing string is what it is. And uh, that's what you're going to want to change that out sooner rather than later. Um, there is a thing called low G tuning. I, it's um, don't put a metal wound low G ukulele string onto a ukulele that's not built for it. You can put the plastic one on there, but it's not going to sound good. Um, so if you have a high G ukulele, have it as a high G ukulele. When you're ready to upgrade, and I don't necessarily think it's an upgrade, um, and you want to get a low G one, you've got to get a ukulele built strong enough to handle that metal string. Um, um, and so that's the note on low G. Helpful notes here, uh, you are going to want to hold this at about a 60 degree angle. Do not hold, hold it horizontal. You're going to want to hold it about here. Uh, the back of the ukulele remains in contact with the front of you, so don't be playing like this. This, will, this won't help you a bit. Have a few people over the years who've tried to play like this and make them go here. Um, yeah, and that, and that means your neck's going to have to at least initially go a little bit forward to see what's going on in this hand. Um, and dots on your ukulele, you've got them on five. Some of you will have dots on the side of the neck, um, but mostly you, it's there in front here. You'll have one on five, one on seven probably one on 10, and maybe one on 12. I have a fancy one on 12 on the front. All my other dots are on this side here. Um, and you want to memorize 5, 7, and 10. Those are, those are going to come up. And then finally, if you're playing with your neck way up here or your back out of whack or all this stuff, you're going, to make, you're going to injure yourself. And so let's make sure that when you're playing, you're sitting nice and straight and, and ordinary um, and uh, that you're not creating tension in any parts of your body that it doesn't need to be there. That's pretty darn. That's sort of a musical uh, standard. I was looking through a book from the... Uh, early 18th century <laughs> old book I think it was 1820s 1830s on uh, mandolin and then right in the very front tension will ruin your experience so it's not a new idea if you're you know playing all hunched up and weird um, that's not what we want and so let's do uh, let's do everything we can not to have that happen uh, all right so that's that piece of paper there that's actually a fairly important piece of paper doing ukulele right um, uh, don't hesitate to look, read through that uh, if you would. Uh, next, let's talk about tuning both ukulele and baritone. Uh, I'm going to pull up my ukulele tuning page here. Um, if you are tuning a ukulele, your phrase is 
George Clooney eats apples. And on your page there, I put a picture of George Clooney. Those of you of a certain age should know that George Clooney is no longer famous. And so when I teach this to little kids, um, we go with goats can eat anything. But I don't think that's the right way to go. George Clooney eats apples is much funnier than goats can eat anything. So uh, to teach them who George Clooney is, uh, George G C E A. George Clooney eats apples. Now, if you're sitting at home, you have a brand new ukulele, you don't know how to get a tune, um, you, I'm going to give you some choices. Okay, One, if your ukulele came with a tuner, it did not come with this one. This is top of the line, and they're $14, 18 bucks, to 14 to 18 bucks, depending on who you buy it from. Uh, Amazon, I noticed they have 14 50 or something like that. Um, it's the Super Tight HZ, and its exact name is ST8. Um, that's their most recent one. It has a high definition screen and the ultra advanced computer. You're going to click that onto the end of your ukulele and you're going to push the button. And I'm going to show you what happens when I click one of the strings. Let me pull up my thing here. So I've got it on here. Let me get this first where you can see it. Um, a lot of the cheap ones have a green screen on them. This has color screen, right? And so if I click it, okay, that's a G. Okay, and, and you want that little line right in the middle there. Okay, that's what you're looking for. Now notice I'm getting a little bit of a red sign. That means it's a tiny bit low. So I just tighten it up just a smidge. I'm trying to make sure you guys can see this. There, now we got a good solid. And I go to the C, George Clooney. Okay, a little bit low, tighten it up just a smidge. There's the blue line. E, tighten that one up just a little bit. E, and A. Okay, so double check at home that yours sounds like mine. G, C, E, A. Okay, that's what they should sound like. Your tuner may have buttons, other types of buttons on it. Um, like this one has three buttons on the back. I always tell people, don't touch those buttons. Okay, the only button you really need to touch is this one over in front. If you have a different sty type of tuner, that's fine. It'll be good enough. When that breaks, and it will break, um, you want to get a snark, and you want it to be an ST8, and you want it to be the high definition, ultra tight, super tight HZ. That's the one you want. This I've used all of the tuners at this point. There's nothing that touches this guy. <laughs> all right, so there's your tuning. Other ways to think about tuning. Um, um, if you don't have a clip-on tuner, you can download a tuner onto your phone. You should. The one I have on Android is called uh, G-Strings. I thought that was funny. So um, it's a, that's the tuner I use on my phone. I hardly ever use it. This type of tuner isn't particularly accurate and is affected by sounds in the environment. Like right now, I have the humidifier running and our, the heater is running right at the moment. And uh, it, you'll, it'll, it messes up this type of a tuner. So, um, so that's not ideal. Back in the day, we bought for guitars we bought these boxes that you know it was it's a tuner and you and it served the same function as the thing on your phone does now so you don't really need that anymore the other thing to double check now that you're in tune g c e a the way you double check if you will hold down um, on that piece of paper at the bottom there's a thing on it called relative tuning if you hold the top string down at the second fret so this is fret one this is the second fret kind of press down on that it should sound like that and it, which means it will sound the same as the bottom string okay so that's a good thing then on the third string here the, the fatter string if you hold it down at the fourth fret it'll sound the same as the one below it okay that's what we want and then finally at the fifth fret on the second string from the bottom um, it will sound the same as the string below it so that's how we do relative tuning. Back in the day when my dad gave me my first guitar as a little boy, um, that's how we tuned it, was we had a tuning fork and we just got one of the strings pretty close and then we tuned everything else to that. Um, let's see, um, mentioning over here on chat, Rob said it was zero degrees in Texas this morning. That's not why you moved to Texas, by the way. Zero degrees should not be a temperature. <laughs> um, yeah, it's you're supposed to be hot down there. And Q says, where is the paper with the list of what you were talking about? All right, on the front page of the website, Q. So go to uh, jollyrogerukulele.com. 
All of those papers are right on the front page under today's lesson, okay? Um, all right, so that's uh, how you tune your instrument. Uh, you have a couple other pieces of paper that I will just tell you are here. We're not really gonna go over them. Um, the one is getting to know your fretboard. That's one of the papers on there. Um, that's gonna show you where all of the notes are on your fretboard. Now, those of you who have had previous music experience, probably you're having this a little bit of a panic like you need to know this is an A and this is a B or I'm sorry this is a G this is an A this is a B this is a C and so on you do not really need to know that you don't need to know that but I know some of you have come from different traditions particularly piano and guitar where your teachers made you um, put names on sounds and memorize notes and all of this stuff the system we use you don't need to know any of that you really don't um, if there will be um, I will tell you after what I have had a ukulele almost 20 years now, um, I'm still often, all right, now let's see, let's see, all right, C, uh, D, E, F, G, oh, that's a G, right? So you don't really need to know that information, but some of you have to know that information, uh, and it's on there. So the ukulele fretboard is there just as a reference. Which you don't really need to know that stuff. Um, next thing down at uh, the lesson number five, it says your ukulele charts. I do not have a baritone chart yet. These things take days to create, and I just haven't done one for baritone. I will get it done here in the next few weeks. Um, but uh, that's a, a handy device to look up co the chord shapes quickly. Um, it's two pages, or I'm sorry, four pages, both all of the major and minor keys. It's probably more information than you need. I recommend on your phone you download a, a ukulele chord finder. It doesn't matter which one you use. I use one called, um, I have an Android, and I use one, I forget what it's called, uh, ukulele fretboard. And uh, I would say um, these days it's much faster and easier to look up a chord on an app than it is to use those chord charts. I continue to provide those just because I feel like some of you don't have a phone, obviously. Uh, but it's not that by far not the easiest and fastest way to use that um you use it use an app <laughs> i do um and that's your chord chart other things on the front page today um the practice log i put it up there not really as a joke it is a good idea to keep track of how much you practice that will determine how good you get partially practicing is not quite the same level of crazy that some of the other instruments are this instrument's much more approachable uh, you're going to basically remember most of what we talk about today tomorrow uh, whereas on piano and guitar there's no hope for that happening um, but it's a good idea to keep track of your practice and then you know if you're serious or not um, it's more important to show up here to these lessons every day and, and if you can't make a daily lesson go, go listen to the the recording of it um, that's going to make you better at playing long term than anything else and finally um, there is on the, the front page a progress tracker so every single thing that I talk about um, you can just go through put the date you did it and any notes you have about it um, we have now covered um, uh, the first seven lessons on that progress tracker so if you've got all of that makes sense to you um, you can mark off that you are done with lessons one through seven and then uh, the important part of today is lesson eight which is how do we play for Jaca? so let's pull that piece of a uh, piece of paper up um, we're going to start on ukulele we're going to learn the skills and then we'll put it over onto baritone and so grab your frere Jaca for ukulele and let's go through it. Da, da, da. Let me pull up mine. Okay. We got so much music in this program, guys, um, that uh, it's going to be increasingly important for you to uh, have a system to file. In your three reminder, what I'm going to recommend is sort of handouts and just general information. It goes in one section. Ukulele sheet music goes in a second section in alphabetical order, and then baritone sheet music is going to go in its own section in alphabetical order. Your question is, if I'm not going to play baritone, do I need to print out the baritone music? The answer is yes, because in each class, first we're going to play ukulele, then we're going to play baritone. And the skill you use when I am playing baritone will be different than you, the skill you use when we play ukulele. You're still going to play your ukulele, but you're going to play it as a duet with me as I play a baritone. So even if you don't own a baritone, have no interest in baritone, never going to own a baritone, you still want the baritone music because you're going to be looking at that to play an accompaniment part for, with me when I'm playing it. So we're actually going to be playing duets starting today 
forever, and so you're going to want to have both pieces of sheet music. Okay, baritone players are way less of you. Um, right now, you are looking at the ukulele sheet music, and we will talk about what's different for you. But let's first let's learn the skill that we have to learn today, um, and then we will go through and play it on each instrument, and you'll see how it is. So first thing we're going to do today um, on your Frere Jacques sheet music, the ukulele version, you will see um, a baritone chord, and then you'll see some chord grids that say A, and then there's a little grid underneath them. You'll see a bunch of those. Then you will also see quarter note equals 80. That you can pretty much ignore. That tells the computer how fast to play the sound file. And on the website, over on the right-hand side of the web uh, version of this, there's a little widget called MP3 recordings for every song. You're going to want to take advantage of that. You, Prior to playing a song, you want to go to the website, listen to the song, how it goes, make sure you know what's, how, it, how it sounds, and then, um, and, then, uh, and then you can start working on it, right? We don't want to jump in uh, to a song we've never played before <laughs> or never even heard before. And so you'll be uh, using uh, the MP3s. That's what the quarter note equals 80 means on the piece of paper you're looking at. It just tells the computer how fast to play that song. Next thing on your paper, um, underneath the quarter note equals 80, you see this says chords and lyrics. That's standard uh, music notation. We will be using parts of that. You do not need to know how to read that line, except for one thing I will teach you here in the next few weeks about how to how, what those notes represent. Um, and just, I'm just going to tell you how long to hold the note, um, and that's going to be helpful and important. Uh, next to the chords and lyrics, you see the treble clef. Um, part of your homework, if you were here locally, and, and I, I would teach you a live class, your homework would be to draw a treble clef without looking at the treble clef. It's actually surprisingly difficult uh, to draw one without looking at it. <laughs> Next to that, you'll see some hashtags or sharp signs or pound signs. Um, those, are, those are sharps. If you played any other instrument using standard notation, those are very important. For us as tablature players, we don't care about that. Um, the, the line below that's going to take care of all those sharps and flats, so you don't necessarily need to know that stuff yet, maybe never. Next to that you do is an important piece of information you do need to know, 4-4. Four, four. The only number on there you care about is the upper four. That means four beats in every measure. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Every single measure on this piece of paper has four beats in it. Um, the measures are divided up by vertical lines. So that first measure is measure one. You'll see a little ways down it says two. That's measure two. Next line measures three and four. Next line measures five and six. Final line measures seven and eight. So um, that's going to keep you moving forward. And, um, and there's four beats in every one of those. That's going to be very important to you as a ukulele player because we play two ways. One way we play is melodically, and one way we play is harmonically. And when we play harmonically, you really need to know how many beats are in a measure so you can strum the correct number of times. Um, and that's what's going on with that line. Now, the line we care about and what our next important job is, is to read tablature. Ukulele melody line, that will show up on all of your pieces of music. Um, and there's four lines on there, notice four lines. Those are the four strings on your instrument. So you have four strings, there's four lines on there. Makes sense, right? Here's what's weird about it. They're upside down. So on the bottom of your ukulele is string number one. On the paper, string number one is on the top. And you're like, well, why did they do that? That's stupid. The reason they did that was you're supposed to be able to hold your ukulele up to the, to the sheet music upside down to see where you're supposed to press your fingers. And then, uh, and then the strings are in order from top to bottom or bottom to top, depending on how you think about it. In the beginning, first week or two, um, this is going to be a major problem. You're going to be constantly plucking the wrong string. <laughs> After two, three weeks, that problem goes away and you never have to think about it again. I will make a brief advertisement to how awesome tablature is. Once you learn how to read this system, all tablature for all fretted instruments is written exactly the same way. So once you learn how to play ukulele, you're reading tablature, you will also be able to play the banjo, the mandolin, guitar, uh, balalaika, okay? all, any instrument that has frets on it, you're going to be able to read the tablature. It's all written the same. And so what you're learning here today is not unimportant. It's very powerful and very useful. 
So from Frerejaga, you'll see the first thing says zero, and it's on string number one, which is on your bottom. So you're going to hit this, but the zero means you don't hold anything down. Now, the next one is a two. You can take your middle finger, hold it on the second fret, which is the fret one, two, three, four, all the way down. We talked about that earlier. Um, your middle finger, i got to get lined up here correctly. <laughs> uh, middle finger, second fret, press kind of hard, going to hurt a little bit, and then you pluck that. And then your pinky on four, pluck there, and then let it, and then you got a zero, so take them both off. And then let's just do that a few times. Zero, two, four, zero, zero, two, four, zero, zero, two, four, zero, zero, two, four. Zero, zero, two, four, zero, zero, two, four, zero. Now notice on your sheet music in the lyric line, the top lyric line says open middle pinky open, open middle pinky open, open middle pinky open. So I told you which fingers to use. Okay, so that's measures one and two. Now also notice over here, I'm just using my thumb. I'm just plucking the one string. I'm not trying to strum. I'm not doing any of that stuff. Just plucking one string at a time. Next measure, three and four, you're going to take your whole hand, slide it up, index finger on four, middle finger on five, and pinky on seven. Four, five, seven. Four, five, seven. Four, five, seven, four, five, seven, four, five, seven, four, five, seven, four, five, seven. Also notice I'm not picking my fingers back up. I'm leaving them laying down because I'm going up the fretboard. The, the, the next note covers up the previous note. I don't need to lift anything up. Okay, so there's four, five, seven. Now we're going to play the hard part of the song, seven, nine, seven, five, four, zero. So we're going to slide ring finger to seven, pluck that, pinky on nine, then come back to the seven. I haven't lifted it, lifted it up yet. So really, all you're doing is taking your pinky off, and then a five with your middle finger, four with your index finger, and then open. So let's do that a bunch of times. Ring on seven, pinky on nine. Ring on seven, middle on five, index on four, and open. And then seven, nine, seven, five, four, oh, seven, nine, seven, five, four, open. Ring, pinky, ring, middle, index, open. Ring, pinky, ring, middle, index, open one more time. Seven, nine, seven, five, four, oh. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, it's a lot. Okay, measure seven and eight, something very exciting happens. You have the first string, it says zero, then it says zero on the second string, and then on the first string. Again. First string, second string, first string, first string, second string, first string. Okay? Now, those of you with baritones, you're doing exactly the same thing. It's just your sound is different. You and I don't sound so great together right at the moment because um, I'm playing in one key and you're playing in a different key. But the, the, the process is identical. you got to learn to read which string you're on and which fret to hold down and that's going to be the same for the rest of your days as an instrumental ukulele player. Now, I want to be perfectly clear. This is the hard way to play ukulele. If you're a great singer, if you sing like a nightingale, if you sing like Israel Kamakaoli and singing over the rainbow, if you can sing, um, you do not need to go down this path because you're going to be using chords, and we'll show you how to play that way in just a minute. But why wouldn't you want to go down this path? pathway even if you can sing there's going to come a point when you have you're saying your first uh, 
two verses and then you're like okay that's time for the middle eight to time for this beautiful instrumental section and then you have to hand it off to to Robert who's terrible right why not you be in charge of it not not this Rob this which 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 way do I go this Rob this Rob Rob him right there he's awesome <laughs> but if there's somebody else you have to hand off the the instrumental section you give missing an opportunity you're going to be able to play ukulele in all of the ways if you sing if you don't sing if you want to sing play with other people so if you want to play with everybody if you want to play with nobody i'm going to teach you all of those ways to play right now all we're trying to do is get a simple one note at a time melody out of the instrument so let's play top to bottom and ukulele players only for just a second then we'll go do the baritone here in just a second but baritone players you can play along with me it's just it's not going to sound so great uh linda made it in uh, uh she still got her cast on doggone it she hurt her arm and so we're waiting on her to get better okay from the top um, everybody can play together. Baritone players, you you know you're going to sound kind of crummy. And then I'm going to give you uh, a solution in just a second. So from the top, one, two, three, four. Zero, two, four. Zero, zero, two, four. Zero. Slide up. Four, five, seven. Again. Four, five, seven keep going seven nine seven five four open ring pinky ring middle index open first string second string first string first string second string first string Okay, that's how we play melodically one note at a time. Uh, Sarah says, I'm here, but I have no printouts. <laughs> well, um, so Sarah, you will be uh, probably needing to go through um, um, a copy of this uh, uh, file. will end up on the front page of the website. Just go to jollyrogerukulele.com, very front page. Scroll down just a little ways, and it has today's date and the link to this class, and then all of the... PDFs you'll need are underneath there. So you can open those in a separate window if your computer is big enough. Or this afternoon when you have a minute, you can print all that stuff out. Uh, and then come back and listen to the to the recording of this. It's the, the YouTube is nice because it records everything automatically. And it's real easy to come back and double check. For those of you who are here right now and you're like, oh gosh, this is a lot. Um, it's an opportunity just to go back and double check the video, right? Everything, every single thing that I'm saying now is magically being recorded by Google uh, so that eventually, I don't know if they can steal my identity or whatever but uh, so all of the sheet music's at jollyrogerukulele.com and um, for those of you who are newer you really only need the foundation stuff and I would probably think about man that stuff for uh, the one o'clock hour the tougher you class you can probably ignore it for right now all right, so you've learned how to read tablature. You've learned how to play a melody. That's a big deal. It's the biggest deal I teach, okay? There's this piece of paper is the key to every single thing else you do down the road. So tonight, as you're working on at home, that's your goal. Make that. Okay, and we'll do it on baritone in just a second. But before we do that, let's teach the baritone one thing. Baritone, you see on this piece of paper, it says baritone chord A, index, middle, ring. Everything in the second fret. Ukulele players, you're paying no attention right now. Just baritone players, index, middle, ring, index, middle, ring. Everybody in the second fret, thumb back here where you can't see it. Okay, right behind your middle finger. You're holding that real tight. Okay, you're just going to strum. You're going to strum two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You're going to do that. Mm. Ukulele players, we're going to do the melody. Just like we did. Okay? Baritone players, what's going to happen in your house? You're going to be playing one part, the harmony part. We're going to be playing the melody part. It's going to sound amazing. Okay? So, baritone players, grab your A. Everybody else, let's play the melody. One, two, three, four. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping, Brother John? Brother John, morning bells are ringing. Morning bells are ringing. Ding, ding, dong, strum. Ding, ding, dong. Okay, beautiful. 
That's the idea. Now, we've taken this piece of paper pretty far, not all the way. Ukulele players, you're now going to grab an A chord. Okay, Your A chord looks like this, index finger here, middle finger here. And you see the little chart that you have there. You see it's as if the ukulele is standing up and, and then the strings are here, right? This puts the the high, the string closest to your face ends up on the left side of the little chart there. Your index finger goes three strings up, first fret, and your middle finger goes four strings up, second fret. That's your A chord. Okay. Baritone players, you stick with your chord shape. One, two, three. Okay. And there, and ukulele players, yours is this shape. Okay. Let's sing this real quick. I'm a terrible singer. You've already figured that out. Um, and uh, but uh, for those of you guys that are working, are good singers, you know, you want to know how to play ukulele this way as well. So here we go. One, two, three, four. Frère Jacques, Frère Jacques, dormez-vous, dormez-vous. Sonnez le matin, sonnez le matin, ding ding dong, ding ding dong. Okay, you'll notice I strummed four times in every measure, no matter what was going on in the melody, I was just four strums for every measure. Because when you're on chords, you're also the drummer, and you gotta keep a nice steady beat. And the way you do that is ignore what's going on in the melody and just keep the beat. So you're you're playing the four four part and the chords at the same time. One, two, three, four. Also notice I'm strum when I strum, I keep going the wrong direction. Um, uh, part of this is I gotta switch the I think I can switch the, the video here. Um, I'm strumming where the neck and the body come together. Okay. That's usually the prettiest sound out of the ukulele. Those of you with guitar background, you remember doing it down here. It's to be a pretty bright sound on ukulele, which you find. Sometimes you may want that bright sound, but for the most part, you strum up here. A little softer, a little prettier sound. Okay, so we've now learned A chord and how to play melody. Okay, those are two, those are not unimportant. Tomorrow we'll review. You'll come in, you'll be like, okay, here's my A chord, and we'll play it that way. Then we will go. Okay, so that's that. Now, we're going to switch keys and switch instruments. Okay, don't run off because this is actually pretty valuable information. You're now going to grab the baritone Frere Jaca version. So hopefully you printed that out as well. And uh, we're going to go run through uh, just the uh, same exact stuff, but just in a different key and a slightly different chord shape. Uh, Frère Jacques uh, Baritone. Okay. Your shape now, Baritone players, is the same as what we were with ukulele. That's your shape. Here, here. The difference is for you, it's an E chord. <laughs> Tune up. <laughs> ah. Okay, baritone. Dark, gloomy baritones explode. That's not the way I remember it. Um, we don't have a good acronym for it. So there's your E chord. Ukulele players, I didn't put your E chord on here, so I have to show it to you. You're going to take your this finger, and you're going to go to the fourth fret, and you're going to put the whole thing and cover all four strings, fourth fret, squeeze like heck, and then your pinky is going to sit up here on fret seven. Okay, that's what it's going to look like. Let me show you on an ukulele. Um, day one, I teach you bar chords. Bar on four, pinky on seven. That's what yours sounds like. Okay, you're going to end up saying, Frere Jaca, Frere Jaca. That's what, exactly the shape you need. A bar on four, pinky on seven. Bar on four, pinky on seven. Bar on four, pinky on seven. That's what you're going to do. That's your shape. Okay. Ukule baritone players, your shape is the same as their A shape. Dun, dun, dun. Here we go. One, two, ready, play. Frere Jaca. Four B 
beats per measure. The last measure I shorted a beat uh, because we're done with the song. Uh, but otherwise, one, two, three, four, nothing changes the whole way through. You're just holding the chord and strumming. Um, those of you who do like to sing, I will tell you, um, I do have the secret to strumming. You'll be getting in over the next couple of days. And it's the, if you think right about strumming, you'll find out it's just you're just keeping a drum beat. And you can make it as fancy or as simple as you want. You could do you can do you can do it's always about four anything that's related to four uh, and you're going to use lots of different choices with your right hand to make it sound cool but you're just going to be holding the chord and doing some crazy thing in, in, in fours over here to get the beats correct you're the drummer all right baritone players i want to play the same thing that the ukulele player just played. Ukulele players, remember, you're on the chord. Okay, E chord right there. Strum, 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 strum. Baritone players, we are O, two, four, O, O, two, four, O, and so on. Okay, read your paperwork. One, two, three, four. O, two, four, O, O, two, four, O, four, five, seven, Four, five, seven, seven, nine, seven, five, four, oh, seven, nine, seven, five, four, oh, first string, second string, first string, first string, second string, first string, and we're out. So, takeaways today. Number one, go to the website, Jolly Roger Ukulele, print and the foundation section, the 12 noon section, that's 12 noon mountain time. You're going to want all of the papers in that section. Um, and so take your time tonight to go you know, pull them up, either save them on your computer, on your iPad, whatever you're using, uh, and then um, otherwise print them out. Um, start your three ring binder, three sections, informations, ukulele, sheet music, baritone sheet music. You will want to have both because I'm going to teach you how to play in an ensemble fashion. That's part of being an instrumentalist is sometimes you're not the star. Sometimes you are backup. And so I'm going to teach you how to play that way as well. Uh, next thing we learn, how to tune your ukulele. That can be challenging in the beginning if you don't have the proper supplies. So spend a little bit of time double checking you've got your tuning together. The third is uh, how to hold the ukulele. Fourth is how to play a melody. Fifth is how to play, I don't know what number I'm on, how to play a uh, harmony, how to play chords. And um, all of these tools are going to be usable, useful for you in the future. Now, tomorrow we'll review everything we talked about today. So if, you, if, you, if you're like a little, little bit panicked, the first day is overwhelming. It's, it's not bad when you're here, when we're face to face, but over the internet, it can be super crazy overwhelming. Uh, and so just spend it tonight getting your book together, getting all the printouts put together. If you're using an iPad, that's an excellent uh, use of that. And then um, you don't have to print anything out. And then tomorrow we'll review every single thing I said today, obviously review. And then tomorrow, which is uh, uh, um, um, where we get started with um, a little, we'll, we'll dig in a little bit deeper into strumming, okay, and into the into into your chords. So we start that on day two. Day one, I want you to play melody. If you were working on anything tonight, I want you to play Frere Jaca one note at a time, reading the tablature line. Tomorrow we'll take and we'll augment that with some additional information on how to strum, how to form chords. Uh, and then day three, we all get digging into bar chords. The ukulele player, if you've got any a bar chord right on day one, we're going to be talking about how important those are as instrumental players to get you to get you going through that. So this week we have some lovely stuff to work on. Um, note that the strumming, the little booklet for tomorrow, strumming, strumming, strumming in the key of A. If you have a decent printer, um, you'll want to print it out front and back, short edge binding. I have to emphasize that. You must print out short edge binding, otherwise every other page is upside down. If you don't have a printer that can do front and back, you can just print it regular and then you, it'll the page numbers will be crazy, but, um, but you'll have everything you need. So if your printer will do front and back, do that. Just make sure you click it on short edge binding rather than long edge binding and uh, you'll end up with a little booklet um, that looks like this. 
and uh, and it'll be you know a little you'll fold it up it comes out to be a nice little booklet and you'll have a, a, a that for you your use forever um, i've had lots of moms and grandmas say this is the greatest thing they ever got ukulele wise because the, when you're working with your little kids um, or grandkids or the next door neighbor's kids or whoever this thing is a wonderful resource and so you're going to want to have that all right, kept you over a few minutes later than I than I want to. Um, yeah, let me double check the uh, chat box here. Otherwise, you're free to escape into the night. Don't panic if something felt a little bit crazy today. Um, it, it all will come out in the wash. I promise. Six weeks from now, you're going to be a fine ukulele. Uh, Clay says, uh, "Good afternoon." Tripped and fell. Oh, and broke a finger on your left hand. Clay, what the heck, man? <laughs> That's not good. Clay. Hope you feel better. That's a bummer. Uh, Mike, checking in from Costa Rica. So glad to have you. Guys, the only difference between you playing at a high level instrumentally and not playing at a high level as an instrumentalist is your willingness to show up to these lessons. That's it. I promise every single thing on team, no matter where you are in the world, no matter what you want to do with ukulele, if you'll keep showing up, you're going to be a great ukulele player. That's the, that's the key. That's even probably more important than practicing at this level is just being willing to show up and expose yourself to what we're doing every day. So, uh, Mike, good to meet you. Linda, uh, get, feeling better. Clay, goodness sakes. Sarah, let me know. Send me an email if you have any challenges with getting the, the, the sheet. Same with UQ. If you have any problems getting that stuff off the front page of the website. Website, jollyrogerukulele.com. You guys need the stuff in the foundation section, the 12 noon section, and you'll probably want every single one of those pieces of paper. So print them out, get them in your three-ring binder. Or if you're using an iPad, that works perfectly well as also. Rob, hope you're warm up there. Sorry, <laughs> heat is out. Sounds terrible down there. Uh, HVAC worker is here. Looks like it's going to cost me a new unit. Ah, oh, of course. Ugh. Well, if it's any consolation, Rob, I had to replace our units here in this building for two hundred and seven thousand dollars. So, uh, so uh, it, it uh, I have I have one hundred and fifty residents who are not very happy about that. So yeah, we where I'm I'm I can relate. <laughs> all right, guys, I'm gonna pull the plug. You have a wonderful day. I will see all of you. If you want to come to the next class, which is the more advanced class, we're gonna be covering some arpeggio work and some Tin Pan Alley this week. Uh, so I will see. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll see some of you there, and I will see the rest of you here tomorrow. Have a great evening. Okay. And stream. Stop streaming.